How do the northern shores of Lake Superior inspire author David Giuliano? Let's find out. But before we do, if you love books and the stories behind them, be sure you subscribe to my channel because you don't want to miss out on any of my author interviews. Interviews are posted on the second Tuesday and fourth Tuesday of every month. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and welcome to All About Canadian Books. This week's guest is David Giuliano. David is a um, spiritual guide, an award-winning writer, and speaker. In 1987, he was ordained as a minister in the United Church of Canada. He's a cancer survivor and, and enjoys the great Canadian outdoors. We'll be discussing David's book, and it's right there, and I've got a copy in front of me, The Undertaking of Billy Buffoni. It is pub published by Latitude 46, and here's what it's all about. It's a vivid portrait of lives intertwined in the search for redemption amidst the uncovering of dormant truths a small town has tried to bury. In the spirit of the boys of St. Vincent, award-winning author David Giuliano creates a story of trauma, humor, and redemption. Catherine, a newly minted preacher, moves to 26 Mile House, an isolated community in Northern Ontario, and befriends the quirky undertaker, Billy Buffoni, who has a disturbing secret he's carried for almost two decades. Billy's best friend, now deceased, leads the reader through the trauma, uh, sorry, traumatic events of today and those from the never forgotten past. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, David. Thanks, it's great to be here, Crystal. I appreciate the invitation. Well, it's great to have you here. Now, David, you are an outdoorsman and every sense of the word, season, cross-country skiing, snowshoeing in the winter, trail running, hiking, biking, sea kayaking on the big lake in the summer. How does Lake Superior and the outdoors inspire you? Hmm. Well, uh, it's funny when I hear you describe me that way, the first thing I say uh, came to my mind is I'm doing those things still just much slower than I used to. <laughs> Yeah. But, I, yeah, but I understand. <laughs> yeah, Lake Superior, uh, you know, it's it's really something to to live on the shore of such a, a majestic lake, and and uh, the wilderness around it. Um, for me, uh, the word that comes to mind is it helps to center me when I mm. take some time to go for a walk in the woods or uh, sit by the lake. And and uh, just yesterday, I went up and walk the ski trails a bit and you know it just it kind of grounds me in a in a geographical place and I think that's really healthy absolutely absolutely now where did you get the idea for for Billy Buffoni where did this idea come from well sadly uh when I arrived in uh, Marathon in 1987 as the sort of novice uh, minister at the United Church here. Uh, the, it was just wrapping up some legal uh, wranglings over t uh, 25 years of a pedophile uh, preying on boys in this community. Oh. And uh, I was kind of stunned by the um, reactions of, you know, there he's been, uh, he actually, he only did two years less a day for the number of boys he harmed. It was uh, tragic. But um, I, uh, I I was always uh, curious and, and saddened, really, about the community's unwillingness to uh, address that further. Like, it was done, it was gone, without acknowledging that there's a collateral damage that happens and that there is a, um, a, a culture that, that somehow allowed that to happen. And um, initially I started writing nonfiction about it and came to the conclusion that those really aren't my stories to tell. I'm, uh, and, uh, and found it much freer to tell a, a totally different story 
about a similar uh, town. Yeah, okay. And I absolutely loved the way you structured the novel, you know, with the narrator mm -hmm. being deceased. Like I thought that was, mm -hmm. that was brilliant. Why did you decide to structure your novel that way? Well, I do like novels that the stories are told in the first person, uh, and that was part of it. But also, I, I chose um, Matthew as the character, as someone who was central to the story, and yet already gone from it. So, um, and he he allowed him to have kind of a more of a bird's eye view, and and a certain amount of compassion uh, for the characters that. You know, uh, sometimes uh, I imagine life beyond life uh, can give us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, re I really enjoyed that aspect. And I, I just felt that that also gave the character such an extra layer of depth when he went back into the past. So really enjoyed that. Now, as you said, your novel is set in Northern Ontario. And the setting is just integral to your to your novel of course did you ever consider setting it in a, another place like a big city or i did you know yeah. um but but somehow so much of the story and so much of who i am is shaped by life in in a, a small town yeah. and um you know i i i think of uh I think it was James Joyce who, you know, said that he always writes about Dublin because if he can get to the heart of Dublin, then he can get to the heart of the world or the, all the cities in the world or something like that. And I, I feel like that's a challenge for all of us as writers is to, to get to the heart of our geography, sort of the universal in the particular. And uh, so that was kind of what I was going for in, in telling this story here. Mm -hmm. um, I hope it has meaning and uh, wisdom for for people who live in other other parts of the world but yeah I also really enjoyed your characters you know Billy quirky Billy lovely Catherine Clarence like just uh, I adored so many of them and they just all seem so real and unique um, did any of your characters when you were writing speak to you louder than some of the other ones well, Billy and I became best friends yes. for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, I really, I love Billy, you know, yeah. uh, and and feel felt sad for him. And uh, yeah. yeah, I just uh, I really enjoyed how he emerged uh, totally from imagination. Uh, yeah. It wasn't modeling him on anyone. Um, Catherine, uh, I don't haven't experienced her loneliness quite in the same way she did, but she's a minister in a church in a little town. And there were elements of, of uh, the way I described her that, that I had experienced. I have been to the Legion on a Thursday night uh, for wing night and felt the, the tension it created in everyone else at the table. <laughs> And uh, so I, I, you know, I could imagine some of those things and, and her love and uh, her prayerfulness around uh, Mother Superior, and uh, those are those are things that uh, have sustained me along the way. But of course, she's a much different person than I am. Yeah. Um, but those were, you know, certainly the two that I I connected with in different ways most. Mm -hmm. And I also found myself I, I I really enjoyed Clarence. Where did Clarence come from? Um, well. Uh, when I when I first read in Clarence, of course, all characters in in fiction I think evolve uh, on their own. But when I started, it was uh, uh, a couple of guys I uh, played pickup hockey with, uh, and uh, you know I I heard their voices, their cadence, their story. Yeah. You know, every every week in the dressing room and. Uh, uh they they helped me kind of find find clarence but uh of course they they aren't he isn't anything like them in the end but yeah uh, sorry where i started okay and um what are you working on right now uh well uh i'm just about finished uh, my first draft of another novel 
Mm. Um, and I can't say a lot about it, or I don't want to. I yeah. could, but uh, I, I don't feel ready uh, yeah. to share that. But I can say it does take place in 26 Mile House, and mm. it's about an elderly couple. Uh, okay. And their challenges. Yeah. Well, we will we will wait to find out. Thanks. <laughs> so, David. Thank you so much for coming on the show today and chatting with us about your book. I really enjoyed it. I could not read. So for viewers out there, I could not read this book fast enough because I was dying to find out um, how things were going to unravel. So I really enjoyed it. So thank you, David, for giving us some uh, behind the book stories. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, for viewers, I will also put links down below in the description box with links to David's website to Latitude 46, so you can learn even more about David, some of the other books that he's published, and also, of course, to purchase a copy of The Undertaking of Billy Buffoni. Thank you so much for watching.